Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is Free PBX 101 version 15, part 13, where we're going to be talking about manual phone setup. So in our last couple of videos, we did zero touch provisioning for Crosstalk phones as well as Sangoma phones. That is the process of plugging in a phone from a factory default state and having that phone go through a whole bunch of different processes to get all the way through to registered to your phone system as whatever extension you have assigned it to. That works great for phones that support zero touch provisioning, especially if you have large numbers of phones. But what if you have one-off devices like this Yealink T58A uh, telephone that I have sitting right here? Or what if you have other devices such as paging systems or anything SIP enabled like a video door phone or, or anything that might not be able to be provisioned automatically? Well, in those cases, you can always do some level of manual SIP setup for those devices. And basically, any SIP enabled device should have the ability to connect as an extension on free PBX. You really only need to know three things. You need to know the IP or FQDN of the PBX itself. You need to know the SIP username for the extension that you're trying to configure. And you need to know the SIP password for that same extension. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to set up this Yealink T58A manually uh, so that I can show you that process. And, and while I happen to be doing it on this nice fancy T58A video phone, it's going to be essentially the same process for any SIP enabled device, so long as you can put in the IP or fully qualified domain name of the PBX, the SIP username, and the SIP password. Okay, before we get started, if you guys are enjoying this video series, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions so that you don't miss any of these wonderful tech videos. We try to do two to three tech videos every single week. And if you're looking to just buy me a beer, there's a link down below to do that as well. Here I am at the free PBX dashboard and the first thing we want to do is find an extension that we're going to use with this phone. So I'm going to go to applications and extensions and then we're going to pick the next extension. So I already did Michael Scott. I've done a phone for Dwight Schrute. So we're going to use this T58A as our Jim Halpert phone. Let's go ahead and edit that extension. Now remember, what are the three things that we need to know? We need to know the IP or FQDN of the server. In my case, it's testpbx.crosstalksip.com. Then we know, need to know the SIP username. In this case, it's 202, so it's the extension number. And then finally, we need to know the SIP password, which can be found right here where it says secret. If you just select this right here, that is your SIP password. Now, by default, they give you a really strong SIP password and that's easy to use with the phones that can be automatically provisioned because the system is putting the password into the phones for you. Some devices you might need to manually type in or you know enter through a keypad the password, but I would still recommend keeping it as a very strong password because you do not want any of your devices to get compromised by having a password like, you know, 12345 or something. So just go with the password that they give you. The only caveat there is some older devices might not be able to take a password as long as the one that is generated by default for extensions in free PBX. I know there are some older like uh, equipment that we've dealt with where we had to truncate the password down to like 16 characters or less in order for it to actually work. So if you're working with really old equipment and you think you're setting everything right, uh, but it's still not working and not connecting to your server, try shortening the password down to see if that works with that older, sort of more legacy equipment. Okay, so I know the three bits of information that I need to put into this phone. How do we actually get this information into the phone? Well, most devices are gonna have a way to tell you the IP address of the phone so that you can get to the local graphical user interface of the device that you're trying to program. In the case of this device, I can scroll over and click on settings, and network status and IPv4 status, and I can see that the IP address is 192.168.200.224. So I'm just gonna bring that up in a browser and we get to this page. So this is a factory default phone. By default for Yealink devices, the uh, factory default username and password is admin as well as admin, and we're gonna go ahead and log in. Now, 
the first thing that you want to do for any device that you are configuring is change the default password. And Yealinks even remind you right up at the top, default password in use, please change. So there's usually going to be a section for like users, or in this case, it's under security. And then we can click on password, put in the old password of admin, and then we're going to add a new, much stronger and more secure password uh, for GUI access to this phone. And we will now confirm that. It should log me out and have me log back in, which it looks like it did. When you are auto provisioning phones, the GUI password is set automatically. So you don't have to do this step. This is just something that you should be doing if you are manually configuring these phones. All right, so I'm gonna log in now with my new credentials. And the first thing I wanna do is find where we put in the server and username and password. And sometimes this is all in the same place other times I've seen it where you put the username and password in one section and the SIP server information in a different section. So if you just sort of scroll around the interface and look at all of the different settings, you should be able to find where to put in those three bits of information. So we're gonna click on register in this case. We have up to 16 accounts available, 16 different SIP accounts available for this phone. But again, we're only gonna use one. In most cases, you're only ever going to use one the line active is set to off, so we wanna turn line one or account one on. For the label, we're just gonna put the extension number, which is 202. For the display name, we're gonna say Jim Halpert. For the register name, we're gonna say 202, and the username, we're gonna say 202. And then for the password, we're gonna paste in the password that we copied out of the extension details from FreePBX. For the server host, we're gonna put testpbx.crosstalksip.com and just verify that we're on port 5060, which is the default SIP port for free PBX. All right, let's go ahead and click confirm and register. So we see the register status is now registered. Also, if you go to the front page of devices like this, you can usually see some sort of registration status. If I scroll down here, we can see 202 at testpbx.crosstalksip.com is registered. And if I dial star 43 to do an echo test, we should be able to hear that echo test. You are about to enter an echo test. Okay, In good. So since we were able to get to the echo test, that means that this phone has successfully registered to the PBX server. It was just that simple. But wait, there's more because Right now, we have our extension registered, but there's really not a lot of other sort of useful stuff happening with this phone. For instance, if I press the voicemail key, it says set voicemail code, right? So it doesn't know how to get to voicemail. So there are gonna be a couple of extra things that you're gonna want to do. Minimally, you're gonna wanna set up the voicemail code. So let's do that next. We're gonna go back into the GUI of the phone. We're gonna click on account. This time we're gonna come down here to advanced and right here we can see the voicemail option, right? So subscribe MWI to voicemail, that's message waiting indicator. We're gonna turn that on and we're gonna say star 97, which is our voicemail code for dialing into voicemail from this extension on free PBX. Remember there's two voicemail codes. There's a voicemail code for dialing into voicemail from the extension that you're using. And then there's a voicemail code star 98, which is for getting into voicemail for a different user's voicemail box. We wanna use star 97 because we want the voicemail code for this phone extension. All right, we're gonna click that. All right, so we're gonna put star 97 into voicemail and we're gonna say confirm. All right, so at this point we have our phone set up. If I click to dial into voicemail, it should go to voicemail now. Password. Yep, and so now it's asking me for the voicemail password, and then it will go through the voicemail setup wizard the first time that I dial that password. But what about other functionality? What if I wanted to add some BLF keys? That's busy lamp field keys. Uh, so for instance, I can monitor the status of a different extension. Well, let's go ahead and do that now. Again, I do have to point out that this sort of stuff, BLF keys, all of the various phone options, these things are so much easier to do via something like the Clearly Devices module or the Endpoint Manager. So I strongly urge you to purchase those. They're well, well worth it if you have a large number of phones that you need to provision. Because in this case, say I had 10 of these phones and I wanted to change the BLF key. 
If I have set them up manually, anytime I need to change a BLF key, I have to go around to every single one of those phones and manually change that BLF key. Whereas with the endpoint manager, all of those phones are locked into a phone template, so I just have to change the button on the template and hit apply, and it pushes that out to all of the various phones that use that template. If we did want to set up a BLF key manually, we can click on DSS key and then click on line key. And this allows us to set up all of the different keys down the right hand side of this phone. So for line key two, we're gonna say BLF, busy lamp field. And for line key three, we're gonna say BLF. So the value is going to be the extension number that I want to monitor. So we'll say 200. The label is gonna be Michael Scott. And then the extension is gonna be 200 as well. Then we'll have a BLF key for Dwight Schrute. And that is extension 201. Let's go ahead and confirm that. And now I have extra buttons on this phone for Michael Scott and Dwight Schrute. Let's go ahead and take a closer look with my camera so we can see a BLF key in action. Okay, so here we can see Michael Scott. Now, of course, BLF keys also function as speed dials. So I can click Michael Scott. And it rings this phone over here. We can even see Jim Halpert's picture. I can pick it up and we are now talking. And while we're talking, take this off speakerphone, uh, notice that the BLF key for Michael Scott is now red because Michael Scott is on an active call. So the BLF key indicates uh, or turns red when someone's on an active call. All right, let's hang that up and we should see it go back to green. There we go. Okay, so there you have it. That is how you set up devices manually if you're not using Clearly Devices or the Endpoint Manager to automatically provision your phones. Again, I strongly suggest, I cannot urge you strongly enough to get into auto provisioning of these phones. It's just so much easier than doing it manually, especially if you have a large volume of phones to administer. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. In the next video, we're gonna talk about soft phones. All right, we will see you in the next one.